You know, at no other time of the year could I sit down here and find so many bush tuckers literally within arm's length. We've got that raga there. Over here we've got a fig. That'll be producing fruit in about two weeks. Down here we've got a native grape. Just over the back there's a palm there. And just in there we've got that Polynesian arrowroot. A month ago you wouldn't have found half of these fruits because they didn't have the rainfall to punch them up. Two months ago you would have found none of them except for the palm. And that's the sort of effect that the wet season has on this country. In the top half of Australia, the big rains fall in the summer months, from around January through to April. The monsoon moves in from the north, the drought breaks, and a whole new fantastic cycle of life begins. Up here, we just call it the wet. time of the year for me, this is when my job gets a bit easier. My life revolves around bush tucker, cataloguing it right across Australia, and right now there's plenty of them. Your biggest problem is simply getting around the place. During the wet season, rivers can flood within hours. Sometimes they can stay up for weeks or even months, isolating anyone that's caught on the wrong side. If you do have to get around by vehicle, it's four-wheel drive country only, and you still have to be very careful. One mistake, one slip, and you're faced with an hour or more of digging and winching your way out. I'm trying to get to an old campsite of mine in the Northern Territory. It's southwest of Darwin, in Aboriginal country, between the Daly River and Port Keats, or Wadi Eye as it's now called. When Aboriginals travel through this country, they have an uncanny eye for its potential. While we're looking at the scenery, they're thinking survival. Grasses aren't something that just get in the way. All grass seeds can be eaten, some can even be used as medicines. As you'll see, it's simply a matter of using what's around rather than fighting against it. season camp. I built it two years ago, I think, for that exact reason, to escape the wet. It's looking a bit crooked now. Needs a bit of work on it. Got an old tree falling down, a bit of long grass here, but a little bit of effort can come right up again. Pretty flash cam, in fact. Over here I've even got a shower point. probably wouldn't 
win too many design awards when you look at it, but it used to work pretty well for me 12 months ago when I used it last time. Looking at it now though, I reckon I've got a bit of work to do. The bush provides a lot of the building materials you need for a camp like this. And in these conditions, it regenerates pretty quickly. Out here, you do have to be careful though. Even small cuts can turn into tropical ulcers. And the hospitals are few and far between. But if you're prepared to do without a few of the home comforts, then the isolation can be very appealing. Even in the middle of the wet season, you can still get beautiful, clear, sunny mornings. But whatever the conditions, the best way to do my work is on foot. Because of the rainfall, Plant life is no longer restricted to the waterways. It can be found cropping up all over the country. And that means I've got to cover a lot more ground. One of the real problems of working and walking around wetland areas like this at this time of year are these little fellas here. Leeches. You get them all through this country here. Go on, get out. And you've got to get rid of them because once they lock on, it's a bit hard to remove. I guess if you spend five minutes walking around here, you can expect 20 or 30 leeches to be on your legs. So you've got to check yourself out all the time. Anyway, I've got to get going. Just dump that in there for a bit, because I reckon I stand a real good chance of catching a feed. Probably a little perch or something like that. You get lots of them around up here. Just put that there for a bit. When you're around the waterways, it's a good idea to look around the edges, because what you can get is good information on what's growing upstream, because the trees that hang over the water dump their fruit and their berries and their leaves and by looking at them as they come floating past, you can get a real good idea of what's available. These white berries that are coming down at the moment, they're a thing called Syzygium, and they're bush tucker. Somewhere upstream, there's got to be the parent tree. Let's go and see if we can find him.
This is the tree. So I said, Jim, it had to be here. It had to be beside the water. Otherwise, we wouldn't be finding the fruit downstream. Here they are. <coughs> All over the ground. These little white fellas. You can eat them. Quite edible, nice tang to them. Fish eat them as well. In fact, I'll tell you a bit of a secret. This is what I used for bait on that line I put in the water down the way there. But I've got a better use for them than that. I'll collect a few up and take them back. When the sun comes out, the temperature can reach the mid-40s. The whole area, because it's so saturated with water, turns into a real steam bath. Even just walking can sap your energy. The sweat pours off you. Look at this little fella here. All those tassels hanging down like that. This belongs to the, one of the groups which has got a common name called Polynesian arrowroot. And underneath the ground here, you can get a bulb that you can cook up. But on the top, it's got this little seed pod. All the seeds in it, you can eat. Can't eat the bulb like this though, because he's a bit poisonous. And you've got to treat him up. He won't be ready for picking for about another month yet. And then you bake him up and boil him up. Then you can eat him. But in the meantime, you can eat these fellas here. I'm going to take some back to the camp. With all this water around the place, it's surprising that a lack of it could be a problem. The body in this heat can lose up to four litres a day through perspiration and it has to be replaced or you're in trouble. The best water to drink is the fresh clear stuff that at this time of the year literally falls from the sky. get a tremendous view of the whole countryside and right now you can see the wet season right in action because this bank up this build up of cloud has been coming all day and now at four o'clock in the afternoon it's about to dump down what happens is that the cloud formations and the storms and the rain build up in columns so over there we'll have a dumping of rain and maybe another one over there and one over there i think any second we're about to have one here too and that's what it's like late in the afternoon. But it's great because it's a relief to the whole day. Throughout the day, the mugginess and the heat and the stickiness gets a bit unbearable. But afternoon, this is what happens. And it makes the whole thing worthwhile. Tremendous stuff. Some years the rains will saturate the whole of the top end of Australia. But often it's spasmodic and whole areas will get no relief at all. Not a drop. And it remains almost as dry as the desert. Instead of rain out there, you'd be seeing the smoke from bushfires. This year though, the rains have done their job around these parts.
This is an example of one of those bush tuckers that have got a couple of uses. And that makes him pretty special, particularly in this part of the world, because not only can you eat these grapes, and they're absolutely delightful, just like a muscatel. In fact, they're called a native grape. But secondly, you can use them as a bush medicine, because down underneath the ground, you've got the root system. Stuck me too. And that root system has got a sap in it. That sap was used by Aboriginal people as a cure for death out of bites. I don't know whether it worked or not, and I'm not about to find out. But I reckon it worked, and that's good enough for me. Take these with me, the butte. So, if you're prepared to work for it, you can get a varied diet in the bush. High energy and protein. Turns out I didn't get a perch in the end. Ended up with a little brim. That's all right. Just as good, I reckon. Righto. Let's see what we're going to do here. Put that over there. Let's get that bit of grass out of there. And here we've got those size edgems I picked up off that tree. Pretty good looking ones too. What I'm going to do Squash them up a bit, if I can hold on to them. Like this. Put them in this thing here. Then I'm going to add some hot water. I'm putting hot water in so it'll exude the taste out of the, out of the, uh, the berries, the fruit here. It's got a quite a soury, lemony type taste. And I reckon that hot water, what it does is turns it into a bit of a hot lemon drink. Squash it up a bit there. Pour him in. There we go. Mmm, I can even smell it up here. It's drifting right up. I'll put that, that mug down there. I don't want to strain that out, so I'll put this grass across the top. Mm. That's going to be a strainer. I'm just pouring through like this. There we go. Put that over there. We'll try him out. Beautiful. That's not too bad, but you wouldn't want to be chasing up bush tucker out in the bush all the time. It takes you all day to find it. See, the problem is that only some of the tuckers are in season some of the time. And even when you find them on a bush, there's only one or two berries or maybe half a dozen. So you'd spend all your day chasing them up. I've got a job to do as well, so I eat ordinary food. I supplement it with a bit of bush tucker, maybe a bit of fish here, maybe a bit of barramundi or a mud crab or whatever, and sometimes these berries. You've got to get to the berries pretty quick though. Bit of rain, bit of wind, a few birds, you miss out. And that's the reason why Aboriginal people had to move and move and move. That's why they were nomadic. But some of these things are really worthwhile. I'm off down the coast, and by the look of that lightning there, I reckon I'm in for a pretty wet time of it. But right now, I'm going to sit back and watch the show.
Travelling west to the coast takes you through these vast areas of wetlands. During the dry season, all the grasses wither and die. The only movement that you'd get then would be the small whirlwinds of dust, the willy-willies. But now it's home to all sorts of species of wildlife, from crocodiles and buffalo, all the way through to countless flocks of beautiful magpie geese. The birds and their eggs are a favourite bush tucker with local Aboriginals. Their ancestors used to climb trees and knock the birds out of the sky with throwing sticks as they flew low overhead. Today, the descendants of those people still hold on to that knowledge about bush food and medicine, and they're the people I rely on. Here on the coast, at Wadi Eye Community, the person I come to see is Johnny Chula. Very good. Very good. You've been good, yeah. Eh? I haven't seen you for a long time. Like that. <laughs> hey. you to some eh? Johnny Chula is a really good friend of mine. Although he lives in the town, his tribal lands are up on the coast, just north of here. We'll make a trip up to his mangrove country. He's pretty keen to chase up some of his favourite bush tucker. And wherever Johnny goes, his family goes too. The mangroves are Johnny Chula's favourite place. But the mosquitoes and the mud and the rotting wood are enough to put you right off your tucker. Still, I've got to admit, there's plenty of it in here. Come on now, young fella. Come on. Oh, bite me, you. Come. You can't bite me, boy. Too late. <coughs> Tight for me, eh? Yeah, I got you. Hold him tight. All right, all right. You're holding tight for me, mate. Another one? Yeah. That's it, that's it. The locals throw these little fellas on the fire just as they are. They're a great meal, and I'd be happy to leave it at that. But hidden in the heart of the mangrove tree is another dainty morsel. Yeah. Right the way down. Yeah. Oh. It's the mangrove or Torito worm. Okay. Hey. Okay. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's not really a worm at all. It's a mollusk which bores its way through the wood. It's been the ruin of many a fine old wooden ship. But there's one way you can get your own back on him. You want him? You want him? <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. Hey, big boy. Oh, my taka. My taka. I don't know how can you say skinny, Johnny. Come on, let's. Let go. A bush tucker trip with Johnny Chula 
may not be everyone's idea of a bush picnic. But it's friendships like this which keep me coming back to this part of the world. The knowledge that I've been lucky enough to pick up from people like Johnny makes me confident that you could survive and even enjoy the conditions out here for quite a long time. That's if you're prepared to put up with a bit of hardship and be a bit resourceful. If you want to stay perfectly clean and dry and comfortable, then you're better off staying at home. But I reckon that despite all of this, the rewards are tremendous. I've got myself pretty well squared away here now. I'm going to be pretty comfortable. In fact, I reckon I could see out the wet season. Now, that might be a couple of weeks or maybe even a couple of months. When the time comes to leave, I'll be flat out dragging myself away. You know, I get to see a lot of Northern Australia in different places and different areas all around the traps. But you can never become blasé about it. It simply won't let you.